Magic Tree House, Book Number Thirty Seven, Rhinos at Recess, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter Three, Jomo and Shani. Jack froze. He didn't know what to say. Annie walked over to the two people. Hi, we're Jack and Annie. We're visiting the game reserve. Do you work here? Yes," said the woman. She pointed to her name badge. It said Ranger Shani. I'm Shani, and this is Jomo. We're both reserve rangers. Wow," said Annie. "I'd love to be a reserve ranger. Maybe some day you will be," said Shani. Back to my question: What are you two doing out here by yourselves? Jomo asked sternly. We, uh, Jack stammered. That said, Annie, pointing to the safari ride booklet in Jack's hand, we were doing that, but they drove off without us. It wasn't the driver's fault, Jack said quickly. We we were just too far away when the bus took off. We didn't make it back in time. They didn't miss you, said Shani. Annie shook her head. Not even your parents. Well, to be honest, they weren't with us," said Annie. "They, they're off doing some research. So we, at least I, wanted to go on a safari ride. You know, your story really doesn't make much sense," said Jomo, squinting at them. "I know," agreed Annie. But she shrugged. Whatever happened, this is not a safe place to be wandering around alone," said Shani. "The bus will come back this way soon. We'll wait here with you until you get back on." "Uh oh," thought Jack. "The Rangers would soon find out they had never been on the safari ride." "Good. So what are you guys up to?" said Annie, changing the subject. "We're searching for Rosie," said Shani. Oh," said Annie. "Is Rosie a kid or a grown-up?" "She's a black rhino," said Shani. Jack and Annie laughed. "A rhino named Rosie," said Annie, grinning. "That's funny." "Yes, but it's not funny that no one's seen her for a week," said Shani. "She was about to give birth." "A baby rhino," said Annie. Oh, I'd love to meet one. I'm afraid you can't," said Jomo. "A mother rhino can be dangerous." "Why are they meat eaters?" asked Jack. "No, rhinos are plant eaters," Annie said. "They are," said Shani. "But they can be very protective. If a rhino thinks you might harm her baby, she'll probably charge at you." She could ram you with her head and crush you," said Jomo, "or stab you with her horn. And rhinos can run faster than we do," Annie said matter-of-factly, "up to thirty miles an hour." Jomo smiled. "You know a lot about rhinos, Annie," he said. "Annie knows a lot about lots of animals," Jack said. "I do," said Annie. But now I'm worried about Rosie and her baby. We are too," said Shani. "Rosie's one of our favorites. She was brought to the reserve as an orphan years ago. We've watched her grow up. We're eager to welcome her calf into our lives." "Are you afraid another animal might hurt them?" asked Jack. "Like a lion?" "No, we're more concerned about poachers," said Shani. What kind of animal is a poacher? Asked Annie. A human animal, Jomo said. Poachers kill rhinos for money. They sell their horns for large amounts. Oh, that's terrible, Annie said. It is, said Shani. But our job is to save the rhinos. We just wish the rest of the world felt the same way. Suddenly, a tiny creature with a long tail sprang from the back of the jeep. It bounced off the ground and landed in Jomo's arms. 
Ah, Speedy, you hitched a ride with us," said Jomo. Speedy had a tiny head with bat-like ears and huge round eyes. A bush baby," cried Annie. "Speedy's the mascot at our camp dining hall," said Shani. "During the day, he likes to hide in the back of our vehicles and nap." The bush baby made funny squeaky sounds. "Oh, he's so cute," cooed Annie. "Can I hold him?" "Better not. He might nip you," said Jomo. "I'm not afraid. Please." Said Annie. She held out her arms. Okay, Speedy, be good," said Jomo. He gently placed Speedy in Annie's hands. Annie cradled the tiny bush baby. He was no bigger than a kitten. "Hey, little guy," Annie said. "Your fur is so soft and nice." Speedy swiveled his head around to look at her. He made a croaking sound. Annie laughed. He says he agrees. She said to Jack, "Bush babies are tiny primates who live only in Africa. Did you know that?" Before Jack could say no, a crackling radio noise came from inside the jeep. "Code red, code red!" A man's voice shouted. "Oh no! Grab it!" said Shani. Jomo reached into the jeep and grabbed the radio receiver. We're here. Go ahead," he shouted. Through the radio static, the man shouted back, "Chopper sighting. West gate. Code red." On our way, Jomo yelled into the radio receiver. He looked at Shani. "We have to go now." Chapter four. Speedy, slow down. Got it," said Shani. The two rangers jumped back into their jeep. Come on, Jack," said Annie, holding Speedy. She started to climb into the jeep too. "Oh no, 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 kids! You can't go with us," said Shani. "Why not?" asked Annie. "Too dangerous," said Jomo. "We don't mind danger," said Annie. Jack hung back. "Wait, what kind of danger?" he asked. "Poachers," said Shani. "They might spot Rosie." We have to race to the west side of the reserve before their chopper lands. What's a chopper? Asked Annie. A helicopter, Jack said. Yes, sometimes poachers use helicopters and carry heavy weapons, said Shani. Joe Mo started the jeep engine. The safari ride will be back soon, he said. Please wait here for the bus. Don't wander the bush. We'll see you back at the camp, said Shani. The jeep lurched forward. Wait, you forgot Speedy! Annie shouted. The rangers didn't hear her as their jeep roared away. Speedy made sad chirpy sounds. I'm sorry, Speedy. They had to go save Rosie. Annie said to the tiny primate. She looked at Jack. I really wanted to go with them, didn't you? Uh no, it sounded super dangerous," said Jack. "Shani and Jomo are chained to handle these situations, but I wanted to save Rosie too," said Annie. "I know you did," said Jack. "But let's just do what they told us and wait here for the safari ride to come back." "You didn't want to join the ride before," said Annie. "I know, but it's different now," Jack said. We can tell the driver that Jomo and Shani told us to get on board and meet them back at their camp. Annie sighed. So we just stand here and wait. Yes, and we take care of Speedy," said Jack. Okay, that's important too," said Annie. She hugged the tiny bush baby. Jack looked at their booklet again. He read aloud. Never before has it been so important to keep large, rare animals alive on Earth. In a number of African nature reserves, the rangers risk their lives to save endangered elephants and rhinos. I'd love to change to be a reserve ranger some day," said Annie. "Wouldn't you?" "Um, maybe," said Jack. He looked around. He felt hot, sweaty, and itchy. He waved the booklet to shoo away mosquitoes whining around his head.
You okay? said Annie. It's too buggy here near the creek, said Jack. Let's walk up the road toward those trees. The bus will come back that way. Sure, said Annie. And maybe we'll find out what Morgan means by a paper tree. Maybe, said Jack. He and Annie started up the dusty dirt road. As they walked, Speedy perched on Annie's shoulder. Jack turned the pages of the booklet. He read aloud, "For more than thirty million years, rhinos and their ancestors have survived ice ages, earthquakes, floods, and volcanoes." Rhinos and their ancestors," said Annie. "What does that mean?" All creatures have ancestors that go back through time," said Jack. "Like our great 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 grandmothers, grandfathers, and parents, you know." "Oh yeah, our family history," said Annie. "Uncle Josh is making a chart of that." "Look, here's a great great ancestor chart for rhinos," said Jack. He showed Annie the chart in the booklet. At the top was an illustration of a prehistoric rhino. At the bottom of the chart was a present-day rhino. Jack read, "Modern-day rhinoceroses are descended from the family of prehistoric rhinos, which includes the Paraceratherium." "Whew! Hard word," said Annie. "Just look at this monster," said Jack. He pointed to the drawing at the top of the chart. It showed a huge, long-necked creature. To illustrate the creature's size, there was a tiny person drawn next to it. Jack read more. This ancient rhinoceros was the largest land mammal that ever lived. The creature weighed at least five times as much as a rhino of today. It was a plant eater that mainly ate leaves and grass. Cool, a plant eater," said Annie. "Yep, but I wouldn't want it to step on me," said Jack. He kept reading. The armor of the rhino family has protected the animals for millions of years, but humans have found ways to kill rhinos, and they are critically endangered. Some experts worry that black rhinos could disappear from Africa within ten years. What? Only ten years? Cried Annie. That's horrible. Rhinos have been around for over thirty million years, and now they might disappear from Africa in just ten years. I hate that. Me too," said Jack. Suddenly, Speedy let out a shrill whistle. He leapt out of Annie's arms onto the ground. He frantically hopped around, jabbering. "Speedy, what's wrong?" said Annie. The tiny bush baby took flying leaps up the road. He headed toward the bushes and umbrella-like trees. Wait, wait, Speedy! Annie called. Speedy, slow down! We have to keep you safe. She started running after the bush baby. Come on, Jack! Annie shouted. Jack stuck the booklet into his pocket. Then he raced after Annie and Speedy up the dirt road.